previously in Drimtel Tarn. <laughs> Sudden death now is laying the centre back. Oh, that's not a great pen. <sighs> Honestly, boys, like, I'm really proud of the team how they perform there. It's bittersweet to see it go down like that, especially when I thought we had the win, but. Oh man, how are you hitting a pen like that, G? At least get it on target. It wasn't even that bad in the circle where I've hit it, bro. It's not like I put it in the red. Oh, without the FA Cup, though, that's unfortunate. That is just unlucky, man. Well, boys, it was heartbreak in the last episode with that loss on penalties to Brighton. If you missed that episode, make sure you check it out. Even though we did just include the clip at the beginning there. But just make sure you get up to date with the series so far. We are coming towards... The second half of the season now you can see we are in january today we finished the january transfer window we do also have this game in the bsm trophy against northampton hopefully that one doesn't go to penalties but we're going to finish the transfer window today and then get back to some league gameplay but welcome back to another episode of the dream Tower town career mode it's episode nine the darwin nunez episode and i just want to say words. thank you for support <laughs> <laughs> If you are new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed, turn on that notification bell so you never miss an upload when it does drop. Also, make sure you hit the like button if you do enjoy. Can we keep going for 100 likes? That is the goal I want to try and set for every episode of this career mode. It just lets me know that you guys are enjoying it. It keeps me motivated to keep making the content for you and providing one of the best career mode series in YouTube entertainment. So the first game of today's episode is going to be that BSM Trophy game against Northampton Town. They play a 4 triple 2 formation. There's a few things I want to discuss today in terms of the squad and also with it being January transfer window, maybe some transfers and maybe even some youth players just moved around a little bit. We've got an offer here for Lee Elliott. You know how much this guy means to the club and 1.7 million is definitely not good enough for this guy. So we're going to block offers there for Lee Elliott. He is going nowhere. Sorry, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I told you I'm not interested. I'm not interested! We've had an email from our chief executive saying, Aston Villa have received an offer from Athletic Club. 17.4 million for John Duran. John Duran is a player who I really like in real life and I really want to get to Dreamtel Town in this career mode. I think he could be the future of our forward line 21 years old at the minute no play styles it says which is a bit random i thought he had some but yeah man this guy is so good and i want to get him to Drimtel. and obviously we can't afford him right now and he might be moving to athletic club anyway so in the future we'll have to look out for him see how he grows over in spain now you may have just seen at the top of our transfer targets here ivan perisic i went into the free agents just to have a little look around at some certain players see if there was any gems in there and perisic very old right now, but still good all-around stats. This could be a nice player to bring to the team, just for a bit of experience. You know, he's got experience, played at some of the best teams in the world. And right now, he is a free agent. We have a few free agents that we're scouting up. We're just having a look around, seeing what players are out there. You know, we've got two Hungarian midfielders there with good all-around stats. We've got a Mexican midfielder here with great looking stats. Also, another Mexican right back and a Czechoslovakian goalkeeper. As you saw last episode, our scout, we sent him out for a goalkeeper. Didn't go to plan. Goalkeepers are broken in the Youth Academy on FC25. So this was just a little scouting option in case we need a backup keeper. But yeah, I, I said I was going to show you the transfers after the game, but I've shown you there anyway. That's what I'm thinking. We'll have to see what their wages are looking like once the scout report comes back. So for now, we're just going to get into the game against Northampton. Let's get to it. Now, for some reason, our boy Harley Lane has no fitness at centre-back. So we're going to have to play Finn in that centre-back, I guess. We're running right now with two five foot nine centre-backs. A five foot eight right-back. And a five foot nine left-back. Now, in the NBA, we would call this small ball, right? Normally, I like having tall defenders. They can win headers, get up for the ball. But we're playing small ball at the minute. Going with, uh, you know on the ball focused players i'm trying to make excuses here it's not if you're new to the series our club captain former club captain and star center back barnard got injured he's still out for like six more weeks it's not what we like to see we're having to make do for now but we've been defensively so solid this season so hopefully we can keep that going here is how the team looks hecky Moglu a bit tired up front 
I'm considering starting Amos. I'm going to give a start to Amos for this one next to Cole. Why not? Heki Moglu had a great episode last time out, and he's very tired because of it. What a game we have in store for you today. The hype has been building all week, and we're just moments from kickoff. All the action coming live. This is a cup game, so it is a must win. Don't want to get knocked out. With two back to back cups and back to back games, there's Amos. We've only played this guy once, promoted him from the Youth Academy, I believe it was last episode, and he didn't impress me at all. So let's see if he can change that today. Got Lee Elliott on the edge of the box, a big save from the keeper, come on. How is that a foul? On what planet? Oh my days, bro, why are the AI so good at free kicks? Big head from Chris Rigg there. Richardson. Blasting it into Amos. Can he turn? He can turn. Gets his shot off past the post. A nice play from Amos there. This guy's got no chin, does he? I just realised. Mistake there. Cole. He's on top of that, as always. Oh my god, the defenders are so quick. And again, Cole. Lovely. I was looking for Amos there, but we've got it to Richardson, who gets it wide. To Dribbleson. I was looking for Cole at the back post. Win that. Simmons. It's into Elliot. Can he turn and shoot? Oh, Lee Elliott, what a strike. Let's go, man. That's what we needed in this game. Just a spark like that to get the boys pumped, get us going. That's what I'm talking about, man. On the POV too. Oh, man, what a strike. Lee Elliott, what a quality player. Let's go. Definitely gets it from his dad. Oh, Chris Riggs been turned there. Lovely interception, Elliott. Can he get that into Cole? He can. Cole. Amos is there. Amos is going to let it run. Oh, man, this guy sucks, bro. Now, I'm not, I can't blame Amos personally because I've got to blame EA. He was a victim of EA's Youth Academy glitch. You know, this guy was a winger slash striker, and he's got 40 dribbling, I believe, as his stat. So it's not his fault that he loses it every time he touches it. But that is nice dribbling there. Can we get it into Cole? We can. One more. Lee Elliott for the tap in straight to the keeper. Amos into the side net, and come on. Cole over the top. Oh, f off controller. Oh, lovely Elliot. Amos. Oh, it's a finish from Amos. Come on, son. Let's go. I don't even know this guy's first name, bro. But he's played really well this game. I'm not going to lie. Much better than the first game we played him in. And the lad from the academy, we signed as a backup striker because Nesbitt stinks. Has got his first goal for Drimtel Tana. Lovely assist from who else? But Lee Elliott, but that's actually a quality finish, man. A cross goal there. Could have very easily missed that. But that's a quality finish. Let's go. Just when I was about to sub this guy off and bring on Heki Moglu. And he's now mogging Heki Moglu at the minute. Well, in again, look at the pressure, Amos. Hey, this is a proper Drimtel player right here. And he gets it into Cole. Cole wants one. Oh, straight to the keeper. Big save. Oh, Amos. Cole. That is just pure punishment right there. Northampton, bro. 2 0 down. The passing it around the back like a tramp on foot jumps. Another assist from Elliot. Very unselfish there. He could have easily took that himself. And we've just subbed off Cole for Heggy Moglu there as well. But uh, yeah, Cole gets his goal before he goes up the pitch. And Northampton, that's going to be all she wrote. You man stink. Can't believe they tried to pass it around the back against me, bro. I've still got PTSD from foot jumps this past weekend. So I never want to see that, even in career mode, especially. Well, in Amos, he's had such a good game. And here's Heki Moglu, the man in form. Heki Moglu to make it 4-0, Northampton. Good night. Amos, man, what a player he has turned out to be, at least in this one game. The future could be bright for him if we can get his dribbling stat up. Let's go, bro. Let's go full-time, 4-0. Through to the next round of the cup. That's what we love to see. Got a message here from Nesbit boys. What's this gonna say? Thanks for putting me back in the lineup, boss. It's one. <laughs> Did this guy fall and bang his head or something? What are you talking about? You haven't played a game in about four episodes, Nesbit. I thought that was gonna be a transfer request, honestly, because you saw how quickly. Uh, what's his name, bro? The centre back Oliver. You saw how quickly he put through a transfer request, and I thought 
My man Nesbitt was about to do the same, especially since Amos has just mogged him and took his place as our backup striker now. Never stop mogging. Stop mogging. A real Sigma never stops mogging, lad. A huge game upcoming now in the league. It's against Gillingham, who are currently second. We'll see the league table once we do get to that. Amos got man of the match, by the way, in that last game there. The future could be bright for this lad, like I say. So, here is the league. It's going to be Drimtel Town versus Gillingham. We also have a game in hand on Gillingham. Um, I don't know why they've played 26 and everyone else seems to have played 25. Salford down there with 27 must be because of the cup games. But we currently sit nine points ahead of Gillingham with a game in hand too. This league is looking like ours to lose at the moment. There's still a lot of games to go, at least 10 or 15 more games, I think. We've got a message here again from Nesbeth. This time he says, I've been playing well lately. I don't know who told you that, mate, <laughs> because you haven't. I'm feeling really good. I hope that means I won't be on the bench for the game against Gillingham. Now, I will have a think about it because this is a very busy time in our season and we can have a look at our squad fitness once we get to match day. It's match day now. Let's check out the squad fitness, man. It's been tough to try to keep all these players up to full match fitness, especially given the fact that a lot of these are youth players with low stamina stats. So even our two centre-backs here, Lane and Vass, struggling for uh, stamina. Also, Evans, the right back. Simmons doing well. The youngest, you know, player in the squad, actually, at 16 years old. But still, keeping up nicely with his fitness. He's got, what, 74 stamina, which is actually one of the best stats in the team. It's actually the best stamina stat in the team behind Barnard. Well, Barnard's behind him with 73. So, shout out to Simo, bro. Yeah, this guy's going crazy at left back. So, Wilkinson's at full fitness. Elliot is not. So, Peter Hood is going to start this game on the right wing. Becky Moglu and Cole are actually fine for this one. Richardson and Rig in the midfield, though, a little tired. I might play best at left centre back. Again, small ball, five foot seven. Not what we like to see, but it's got to be done. In the midfield, Richardson tired, like I say. So, we bring in Little. Now, unfortunately, Little's gone down to 61 overall. One of my biggest hates about this game is the fact that you can't see your players' overall change. Unless I'm just dumb and I don't know where to look for it properly. Like, even if we go to attributes and click on a player, bro. What rating was Dave Barlett at the start of this career mode? You don't know. All you know is that he's up to 66 overall. You know what I'm saying? Like, last year and previous years in career mode, you could see everyone's stats, how much they went up. Plus 10, plus this, plus that, minus, especially for players who go down in overall. But you can't see that no more, bro. And that's one of the best parts of career mode, in my opinion, is seeing your players' growth over time. You know, in previous years, FIFA 23, FIFA 24, at the end of season, we do a squad report, see who grew the most, see what players need training and certain stats because they didn't improve that much in the last season. But you can't, we just don't have that on this game. And I don't know why. That's one of the best parts of career mode, just seeing your players grow. Are you supposed to just remember mentally all your players' stats? Is that the way it's supposed to be done? Because I don't get it, bro. But like I say, if I'm being stupid and there's some other screen somewhere that I don't know about in like office or something, like that, I don't know, then let me know. How do you see your player growth, bro? But yeah, man, that's just frustrating. Uh, but that's just something I want to get off my chest. I might actually make a video soon of all the things I don't like about this career mode. Not to complain and, and spread negativity, but just to try and raise awareness. You know, not that I'm the biggest YouTuber in the world that gets the most views, but if I can try and, you know, put a video out there that gets some attention to it, EA might see it and try and fix some of this stuff, you know? I mean, that's wishful thinking, but be the change you want to see in the world, innit? Here's how Gillingham are going to line up against us, though, for this game. 4-2-3-1 formation. They have a little in the midfield of their own. The boy Dave Bartlett picking up the captain's armband for this game in the absence of Lee Elliott. The stage is set and the tension is palpable. 90 minutes of what should be highly entertaining and absorbing football to come. And it would take a very brave person indeed to predict the outcome. What an enticing prospect. Don't go anywhere. All the action coming up next. This is how the visitors start the game. Yeah, it looks to be a 4-4-2 and you'd expect the two... Putting Cole Lincoln up early. How is that going in? Oh my God, the keeper has had a stinker there. I didn't even get to finish my sentence. Hood and Cole linking up. Now, remember last episode, I discussed the fact Oscar Cole has the power header trait. I don't know if he had that from the start or developed it, if you can even develop play styles. But I thought, let's just dink this in, try and win the header. He has won the header, towering over that defender who barely even left the ground. Why does it say it's like a play style plus there? Actually, it's not, but the keeper, oh man. 
That stinks. And let me just show you, boys, because somebody asked me this in one of the previous episodes too. Let me show you the game settings live. You know, I'm not doing anything to this. Huh? See, uh, so I guess there are CPU sliders on. Wait, what? I've not touched any of this, bro. But the, here's our ones anyway. Our ones are all on 50. I have not touched the CPU, bro. What the hell is that? I don't know about none of this, bro. I did not touch any of this. But anyway, what I wanted to show is that we haven't touched the goalkeeper ability anyway. Bro, why is it not like this? Am I tripping? Tactical CPU decision making will fluctuate slightly from baseline behavior every match. Allowing for more variety when playing the same opponent multiple times. I don't know, bro. But now I've flicked it. It's gone back to 50-50. So let's see if that makes a difference. See, I didn't even know that was a setting, bro. I didn't even know that was on. But I just wanted to show that like, we've not touched the keeper. That's just their keeper stinking. Cole looking for Hood again. His partnership is cooking. Hood. Cole. Overlap. Chris Rigg. Big save. Oh, man. Let's test his keeper, bro. He's looking shaky. Big head from best. Small ball working out nicely for Drimtel again. Chris Rigg looking over the top to Peter Hood. It's a bad pass. It's a mistake, though. Is Hood. Peter Hood over the bar. That was so close from the youth lad, man. He is so lively. Growing a bit of a unibrow there. He needs to shave that immediately. But yo, that was so close. Oh, come on. Here's little again, Chris Rigg. Chris Rigg's got some space. This keeper, man. What is wrong with him, bro? EA have just gave this guy the worst animation package possible. Oh, Evans has got a knock. Our right back, that's not what we like to see. I don't think there's anyone on the bench we can bring on. Finn was tired after the last game. That is not what we like to see, man. He's played on, so hopefully it's nothing too serious. It's into Peter Hood again. Can he find Cole? He can on the turn. Cole, that's two. This is going to be a slaughter. This, man, this team's too good. You know what? We're 2-0 up. Let's not take the risk. Evans, you're coming off. Finn is knackered, though, at right back, isn't he? We're just going to have to take the risk, man. We can't have another injury in our defense, which is already thin as it is. Oh, free at the back post. What a save from Dave, this guy, man. Oh, what a hero. What a savior. Get that wide to Simo. Simo going to play the 1-2 with Wilco. Dribbleson. He's got the 1-2. Here we go. Simmons inside now. Room to work with. Simmons might go all the way. Where's his support? It's Peter Hood. The other youth lad who came through with Simmons at the same time. A big strike. Becky Moglu getting beat there. Come on, big first half. Let's go. We are the best. Oh, a referee. Wilkinson's been clattered there. It's into Hood. It's flicked up for him over the bar. Come on, Peter. Keep it down, man. This guy, Peter Hood, man. Must have popped some Viagra before the game. He can't keep it down. Big head rig. Is Dixon fresh on the pitch now? Down the line for Cole. Cole into Nesbitt. Can he beat his man? Nesbitt can. Chris Rigg! Oh, Chris Rigg! He's put it wide. It's a tap in. That was nice play from Nesbitt. I skipped him a lot, but he's done his man. Got the ball into the danger zone where he needed to. And Chris Rigg, it was a tap in, bro. Open goal. He's put it wide. Full time there. 2 0. Right now, Cole is on track to match the EFL League 2's long standing goal scoring record. Could we see a new benchmark set come the end of the season? Now, I believe the record is 41 goals. Cole is currently on 24 goals, so he could actually match that record. If Oscar Cole gets 41 goals in this season, that would be insane. Are you kidding? No injury there for Evans. Must have been a little knock, and since we subbed him off early, he was all right in the end. So we're getting towards the end of the transfer window now. Another league game coming up against Fleetwood. I was thinking about adding Nesbitt to the transfer list. Getting rid of Nesbitt, that would free up what, 1 mil? Let's see, 1.4 mil is Nesbitt's current value, but I think that would actually be stupid to sell Nesbitt at the minute. I know I've been joking a lot saying he's not good and not whatever, and we've got Amos as a backup now, but I do think Nesbitt still has room to grow. He's 21 years old, striker, right wing. He is a good backup option. Obviously not happy about his playtime, and I think we keep Nesbitt around until maybe uh, even just until Amos gets a bit better, bro. Amos has shown great potential at the minute, but with 41 dribbling, he does just need to improve that. It's a five-back formation for Fleetwood as we head into this next game. Their left centre-back looking very tired indeed. And just before we head into that match there, we do have our scout report back for all of the players that we did scout up. 
from the free agents. So Ivan Perisic, like I say, would be a very nice player to bring to the club for his experience. Still, even at that age, got good stats. You know, can play left wing, left back, left wing back type player. Only thing is, he wants between 18,000 and 28,000 his weekly wage, which is very high, especially for a club like us. And I just don't know if it's worth it. Let me know in the comments below if you think this would be a good pickup for the club. Bringing in a player. Has he won the Champions League? I'm not sure. But he's definitely played in some big leagues. Played for Inter Milan. Who else did Perisic play for? He played for Bayern Munich, no? All of these players from the free agents are looking between like 10k minimum in their wage as well. So I was going to go and just pick up a bunch of them and try and get some more squad depth. Like this guy looks great. Technical play style. Good all-round stats for like a box-to-box -box centre mid. Can play DM or CM. He actually has box to box plus as well and hold them plus in the DM. Kata, this guy looked good, bro. But again, the wage 12 to 19 grand. I just don't know if we can afford for a player like that at the minute. And this guy looks even better, bro. 75 overall. That's a gold card. Just the same again. Great all round stats. Playmaker plus wide, playmaker plus. Garcia at right back. I don't know, man. Let me know in the comments what you think of these free agents. Should we pick any of them up? It's match day and we are going with our strongest 11 possible right now. Not only in terms of rating, but also stamina. Cole is tired, but we just need this guy to play, bro. You know, we can at least get the first half, get a hat trick, and then we can bring on Amos or Nesbitt to support the rest of the lads when we're already 3-0 up. That's tactics. Never doubt them. Match day is upon us. Fans are pouring into the stadium. Anticipation has reached an all-time high. All the action here on EA TV. Chris Rigg! Oh, it's past the post. Chris Rigg, man. He wants a goal in this episode. Big tackle Lane back into the squad after two games out, it felt like, for Lane. Nice to see him back. Is Hecky Moglu wide? Elliot. Trying to find Cole. That one two is lethal. That one two is lethal. A big save again. Gotta be doing better there. Lee Elliott win that. Easy. Richardson, lovely dribbling into Dribble Sun. Into Hecky Moglu. Can he find Cole? He can. Cole! Out of his feet. There's the goal. I told you. You start Cole, you get him a hat trick, and then sub him off at half time when he's tired. It's tactics. Never doubt them. Cole! For two! Oh, I thought that was in, bro. It went past the post there. What a throw that is. What a switch from Hecky Moglu too into Lee. Can we get it? Can we keep it in play? He has done. Can we get it in the box? It's a lovely one too between Moglu and Elliot. Wilkinson gets it in. And Cole! What a save, man! Oh, this guy. This guy, Oscar Cole. It's a Cole world. Mustafa! Oh, lad, he's inspiring everyone now, Cole. The goal for the overhead kicks. What a pass that is. Oh, Dave, what a save. Get there, Vass. What a save. And the refs give a pen. Get lost, lad. It's never a pen, bro. I've slid in to try and block it. Vass, moving slow, bro, to try and get the rebound. Low reactions. Yo, calm down, Vass, lad. You look like a smurf, G. But Dave saved it anyway, lad. Vass didn't even need to slide in like that. But we know that Dave can save pens. Never mind, lad. I was going to go that way as well. Don't know why a bottle didn't change last minute. Come on. That's the equaliser as well. It felt like we were like 4 0 up, bro. So all these shots that we've been having. Oh, Elliot, what are you doing? And there's the momentum swing now. Big tackle, Chris Rigg. Easy does it. Big inception, Chris Rigg. Get it forward, Chris. It's into Cole, who we said we were going to take off, but we left on because we need this guy. We need this guy. Lovely play. Big save offside anyway. But what play that is, man. We are cooking with this team, bro. I swear down. Big tackle from Lane high up the pitch. We got one more attack in us. Elliot, we need to switch it to Hood. He's got it. Come on, Hood. And ball ref. Come on, boys. This could be it. This could be it. Are we going to get the ball in the box? It's Evans on it. What the fuck is that, Evans? What the fuck is that? The fucking hell is that? Over. Game over, 1-1. One, one. Drop points there. It was a tough one. Should have won. We had the chances. Only ourselves to blame. Okay, bro. Next fixture in two days. We don't even get a chance to try and recover. We're going away to MK Dons. That's a tough fixture right there. 
MK Dons seventh in the league as it stands. We still have a game in hand on Gillingham in second place, and we're ten points ahead, bro. Look at our goal difference too. Fifteen goals conceded. I'm so proud of this defense. It's a five-two-three formation for MK Dons. Hopefully, we can overload the midfield. Let's get it then, man. Before we get to transfer deadline day, there's gonna be some business to be done on deadline day. So stay tuned till the end of the episode for that. Oh, that's massive. Liverpool have just signed Mitoma from Brighton. If only they could have done that. Wait there. Why has Mitoma said well done to himself, bro? <laughs> oh, man. He said well done, Liverpool. You've signed a quality player there. If only they could have done that a few games ago, we might have beat them in the FA Cup. Oh, dear. We've had everyone set to full fitness here, but no one's recovered. Chris Rigg especially. We're going to have to play a second string midfield here. It's going to be Little and Dixon. Little Dicks in the midfield is crazy. We're going to have to put Finn at centre-back. Vass is going to have to play with half a leg. Actually, I've decided Dixon's going to play centre-back this game and Vass is going to be the one to drop. We're going to play Todd in the uh, deep-line playmaker role. Uh, Little's going to play in holding midfield and Todd comes in from the reserves to play playmaker plus plus. I start to aim most over Hecky Moglu as well. Why not? I'm just experimenting with it, boys. Let's get to it. All eyes on one man. Will he add to his total of four goals from his last three? This is EA TV. Amos and Hood, that's a quick start. Hood putting it back in for Amos. Can't win the header. I'm liking Lansari Amos, though. He could be a star player for the future, boys, or for the right now, even. That debut performance from him absolutely stunk. But since then, he's been playing so well. Here he goes again. Into space. Can he get a shot off? It's gone in. It's Lansare Amos with no chin. He needs to start mewing. But let's go, bro. Oh, man. What a player. What a player. See, do you know what I think's happened to Amos? EA generates these players when they're like 14, sometimes 13 in this game. And they have little baby faces. And then they grow and get older, get taller and fatter. But it's like the face doesn't develop either. So we still got a baby face. Got a free kick. We've got a free kick. You know who takes our free kicks? It's none other than Lee Elliott. A hey, 14? Get away, lad. You can't take it. You're on their team, lad. 14, bro. You're not allowed to take it. Anyway, we've got Elliott with the play style for the dead balls. That's not enough power, I don't think. It's over the wall. It's an easy save, bro. Three bars of power. That could have been in. We did just under three and it was an easy catch. Come on. What a tackle best. He's been so good. Our defense is actually so good. Like, we don't have a backup right back, really. Peter Hood was going to be the backup wing back, but he's more of an attacker. But for left back, best than Simmons. That's just quality depth right there. We're rolling deep in the left back spot, like two Adels. No one told me last time I asked, but can players develop play styles on career mode? Because if Hood can develop technical... Or one like that. He will be an absolute beast in that right wing. That's just nice dribbling overlap is Cole. Back into Amos getting his shot off a big block again. This guy's been the man of the match. Easily in this game. Probably player of the episode. You'll remember that player of the episode. I need to bring that back for real. What a pass that is. Is he onside or offside? What a save Dave. This guy man. Where would we be without him? I do not know. It remains 1-0. Big tackle. Amos keeps it in. Elliot. Back post is Hood. Hood getting it across to Cole. What a goal that is. Let's go. Did Peter Hood meg the defender there with the assist as well? Let's go, man. Oh, this team are so fun to play with. This is such a contrast from Ultimate Team, where all my players are absolute fucking idiots. But on career mode, man, I'm loving this team. Oh, man, I can't wait to see where we go in the future. Let's go. The electronic board showing one additional minute. And that's great work to keep it in Look at this press. That's just quality. Let's go. What a win that was then. Well, boys, we have made it to transfer deadline day in January 2025. We have an offer through for Felix Richardson, which is getting blocked. A star player. I will not entertain any amount of money for this guy right here. He is the most consistent player in our team, I swear. I said some business was going to get done on deadline day, and I think it's going to be. As it stands, we have 1.2 million in our transfer budget and 58,000 in our wage budget. 
And with all our players' contracts negotiated for next season and the future years to come, I thought what better way than to just spend our remaining money to secure an absolute worldie of a player. Five months left on his loan, Chris Rigg, we loaned in from Sunderland on a loan to buy option and I think we should settle the buy option right now bro. This guy is so good. If we let him go back to Sunderland, we'll have to pay even more money than we settled for in the loan offer. So what I want to do just while we have the money here is settle this buy option. I know we can do this outside of the transfer window, but I think we're not going to sign anybody. You know, I think our squad is good enough right now until next season. We can look at purchases for the starting 11. But right now, Chris Rigman, he's the player that we want and need the most. So let's try and settle this buy option. We negotiated it was 1 million. Now, his current market value is 1.3 million. So, W negotiation there from CM Mitch. We are going to pay the 1 million. Let's go. We've agreed terms with Sunderland and we can negotiate with Chris Rigg for his full time contract. I can't wait until Chris Rigg is officially our player. He wants important first team player and that is what he's going to get. Five year contract for the 17 year old. Surely that's good enough. Yes, it is. No release clause. And as for his wage, he's currently on nine grand at his current club. We're going to offer the same because we are skint. Chris Rigg, nine grand. Do you want to play for us full time or not? Do you want to go back in six months time, five months time? He's happy. Chris Rigg is officially a Drimtel Town player. And I am so happy with that, man. Shout out to the Sunderland fan who told me to sign Chris Rigg. Yeah, First episode, I think it was, or episode two, it was a Sunderland fan in the comments, said, sign this lad, he's great, he's killing it in real life, we've signed him, and he is an absolute star boy, yeah? Welcome to the club, full-time Chris Rigg, and hopefully with that nine grand a week, you can get a hair transplant, because you are bald and at the back, mate. He's got a patch like John Cena. Sky's the limit for Rigg. And he's officially our man. Let's go. One mil for Chris Rigg is an absolute steal, by the way. But now we are completely skinned until the end of the season, which I could have shafted us there. Oh, we can't sign anyone from the Youth Academy, I've just realised. Oh, I am so stupid, bro. What is wrong with me? We can't sign anyone from the Youth Academy now because we have no wage. Yeah, seven grand weekly wage, 150 grand in the budget. Is that going to be good enough to get us by? I do not know. Just in case it's not, boys, I'm going to add Nesbitt to the transfer list. It is deadline day, so the chances of us getting a deal for Nesbitt on deadline day done is highly unlikely. But I'm going to add him just in case. We've got a message from Chris Rigg, too. He said, hi, boss. I don't know why he's texted us twice, by the way. Just wanted to say I'm really happy how things have been sorted between the clubs. You know I've been happy playing here. Just hope we can go on and win things together now. <laughs> yeah, Chris Rigg. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, it feels good to hear good words from Chris Rigg. I'm glad that he's enjoying his time here at Drimtel Town. Let's start advancing through deadline day and see if anything happens. We've got three hours to go in deadline day and no other offers come through for the two stinkers, Willis and Bentley, that we listed on the transfer market. And I'm very disappointed about that. I am stupid. I thought it would be a good idea to sign Chris Rigg. You know, that it gave us a little boost in the squad. However, now we have no money to sign players from our youth academy. And also, I wanted to sign some coaches if we had the spare funds to help with our team's development. I was waiting for some five stars to come through. But as it stands, no one's coming through in the five star range, bro. It's all just fours. And there's no other way to generate money. So I am stupid, but it is what it is, man. Let's just advance and finish off deadline day. Well, deadline day's over. That was very uneventful. And disappointing to say the least but it's the first of february we have a fixture against sheffield and getting into this new month of feb i believe the bristol street motors trophy has been drawn for the next round the quarterfinals sees drimtel town go up against bradford city can we make it to the finals of this trophy can we win some silverware in our first season with drimtel Find out next time on another episode of the most electrifying career mode in FC25 Entertainment. Now, if that wasn't enough, a bonus for everyone who has stayed tuned until the end of this episode. A lot of people like to click off early, but for everyone who's stayed tuned, right? We are in the month of Feb. We have new scout reports coming back in this month. We already know where one scout is, Kenya, but we called the guy back from Georgia. Where did we send him to? We are going to get our first scout report back next episode from Japan. That's right, boys. 
We sent a scout to Japan. We're looking for a striker, a poacher, an advanced forward, a false nine. The next star out of Japan. Hopefully everyone's enjoying season two of Blue Lock. But I will catch us in the next episode, people, man. I can't wait to see if we can get our hands on King Baro, Isagi, Nagi, just one of the boys. Let's find out next time, man. Like, comment, share, subscribe. You know the vibes. I'll catch us next time. Take it easy.